Hey everybody, welcome to Inner Brews. This is BK. We're here at Grove Studios, and we're gonna talk to a Michigan artist while having a Michigan beer. Today we're gonna have a Founders CBS, and my artist today is Jackie Stubbs. What's up, my man? Yo, 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 what's up, man? How you doing? Check out this beer, bro. It's a what we call it, an Imperial Stout, bro. Brewed chocolate and coffee, aged with maple syrup, bourbon barrels. That's a pretty horse too. Let's try it, bro. Bro, it was bottled almost two years ago with 11.3%. Oh, my God. Bro. Wow. I'm going to be lit. <laughs> oh, my gosh. You drink a lot of uh, the dark beers? Nope. The darker style? No. Not at all. <laughs> I stick to the simple things in life like Budweiser, Coors <laughs> right Light. On. The classics? Yeah, and lately I've been on the seltzer game. Seltzer game? You, seltzer drink, you, drink, you drink hard seltzers? Yes. What's your favorite hard seltzer so far? Uh, right now, I'd have to say it'd be the strawberry iced tea. From what What brand? Uh, is it Truly or some shit? Truly. Like there we yeah, go. Truly. truly? Yeah, Bud Light got a Nailed seltzer it. out now, too. Yeah, and I saw that. Those are actually good. The Corona got one, too. Yup. Those are good. And uh, Coors Light got one as well. Right on. Yeah, that's what I've been on. That's what's up. Mm-hmm. I, got one there. I like the Corona ones. Anyways, mm-hmm. uh, dude, you're a fucking multi-talented person I know. Uh, we've been friends for fucking decades since high school. Mm-hmm. Uh, you you've always had your creative talents and multiple things, whether it be writing, playing guitar. Uh, let's start off from the top. Uh, what got you interested in playing? Like, when did you start playing music? Let's see. My dad, he used to be a drummer. Well, I guess you could say he still is a drummer. But what he called the knee drummer. So he'd be out in the garage slapping the sticks on his knee. Always Ooh. just, just. Just following the, right. just following the music, just following the music, <laughs> and then when we finally got to an old enough age, he um, he pulled the drums out, and then finally started letting us bang on them. And then uh, my brother got a guitar when he was probably about ten or eleven, and that was the first time I picked up a guitar, and I didn't know what the hell I was doing. Oh, for all. sure. And then probably about in high school. When I met another person, well, I didn't meet him in high school, but we finally started to play music together, and then he taught me a bunch, which would be my boy Matt. So then that's when I finally actually learned how to play notes and actually finally learned how to play guitar. So what age school. are you when you finally learned these notes? In probably 14. And, you're, and we're talking mm-hmm. about, like, guitar, uh, mm-hmm. all right? Mm-hmm. How far did you go into drumming? Uh, not really far. Not really never far? Never really liked drumming. Never took it, never yeah. took a hold of that I didn't one? Have, I had the energy, but... Oh, you certainly have the fucking energy for I, it. Uh, I never had, kid. like, the, the the feeling for it. I would hit too hard, and by that, by the time I'm done, my, my, my leg, my arms are just like, <laughs> and I don't like that. Like, I like to, and I like to have fun. I like to give it my all, and I just can't do that with drumming. I just get, the, I got the jello arms. Right on. Uh, what was your uh, musical influences playing the guitar? Oh, man. I mean, being that young, shit. Led Zeppelin. Led Zeppelin? Jimmy That's Page. the go-to? 100%. Yeah. Eddie Van Halen. For sure. Easy. Uh... I mean, I grew my hair out the first time was because of my dad got pulled out all the records finally, and we pulled out this, we found this old record player, and I just started just diving into the records. So all classic rock, and then my mom, she loved Bob Seger, so it was pretty much just all classic rock, (laughs) all classical stuff. I didn't really listen to any new age stuff. I mean, obviously, like Backstreet Boys, Blink-182, NSYNC, all the boy bands you grow up on, but it was all- Yeah, back in the 90s, those the hot ones. It was old school stuff for me. Right, 100%. 100%. 100%. Uh, so do you feel like uh, at that time that you mainly focused on guitar? Yep. yep. Yeah. I didn't really, I, I mean, I, I, w- I could still mess around with the drums, and I would mess around with bass if it, if it needed be. If somebody needed bass, so I would give it a shot, but guitar. guitar right on. Oh, do you remember your first project ever? Uh, Yeah, it was called A Lonely Betrayal. One of was Matt and Kevin. Yeah. And Kevin played gu- guitar. I played guitar, and Matt I'm sorry, Kevin played bass, I played guitar, Matt played guitar, and then they actually kicked me out of the band for JT. Oh. Yeah. I mean. I, I, I gotta go. I got to go. Yeah. You need to be mad at yeah. that one, right? And I couldn't I mean, really be like, well, Kevin, shit. you gotta go. I'll play bass now. So I kind of just bit the bullet, and I was like, all right, so I left. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Do you remember any songs that you guys wrote? No. no, no none no, of that? No. No. It was Never really Never recorded anything or anything No, like no. We, we used Audacity. Yeah, <laughs> right. Put the a fuck little on. mic in the middle of the room. Yeah. And just all of us play around it. Damn, yeah. audacity! That's mm-hmm. an old school one mm-hmm. right there. Oh, uh, all right. Well, then uh, the next project I know you to go in uh, was the project with me and the fellas. You were in my advice to you. Mm-hmm. You came in probably halfway through, like the band figuring out shit. We lost members. Yep. And then, like, as soon as you came in, it was mm-hmm. like a whole different beast. It mm-hmm. was just like because I officially. Well, I mean. 
I probably would have been in the band earlier, but I didn't have the equipment. And then I ended up buying a guitar and an amp and a half stack. And then once Dustin left, do you I remember? Was just like, I got you. You remember what kind? Yeah, it was a, a, a Schecter Hellraiser and a Crate half stack. Right, I paid six hundred bucks from some dude in Detroit for both of them. Really? Yeah, yeah. Together or together? Get together. the fuck out of here! Oh, yeah, it was worth it, hundred percent. Because the guitar itself was like a five hundred dollar guitar. At the right. Time. So, and all in good condition. Or oh yeah, worn, perfect condition. Yeah, perfect right. condition. Case for it and everything. It was perfect. It was awesome. I mean, you could not have asked for a better. I deal. remember. I remember that because uh, I remember uh, who was it? It was a Landis first before he left, right? Yep. And yep. he was, and he was like. How much you pay for that? Because he had expensive equipment mm-hmm. that he bought right out of mm-hmm. guitar, uh, guitar Center. And sure enough. I remember that. I remember that. He went and spent a good pretty penny on his stuff. Yeah. And you got yours on the hookup. Yep. <laughs> yep. Just buy it in my time, man. Sooner or later, the right deal will come to you. <laughs> so you obviously play guitar. Mm-hmm. How was it coming into a band that was already formed? Uh, I mean, it was for pretty, you. Yeah. Pretty easy. Since you guys mostly had all the stuff ready to go, I just had to kind of learn what you guys had did. And I feel like, I mean, I don't know. We didn't really do a whole lot until after Atlantis left. Right. And then we we dropped it down to B, mm-hmm. and then we kind of just, like. And it was just like took, party metal we, we from took, there. Like, yeah. yeah, party metal. We took off right there. That was, like, where I feel like. That's we, when we dropped all the melodics. We, yeah, we found our We peak. stopped trying to sing because yes. we couldn't. <laughs> yes. That's when we were just like, you know, let's just let's milk it for what it is. Let's do what we're good at. Let's be good at what we're good at. Like, Brandon, kick us a beat. <laughs> That's what you're like, hey, man, just start playing something. And I would just follow him, and lo and behold, we got songs. Whatever you were writing, I have no idea. I, I don't have no idea, dude. You know, so. I probably wrote down a couple lyrics, and then at the next practice, changed those lyrics. And then when we were on stage, forgot all those lyrics. But hey, <laughs> the one lyric we could all always remember is, I can't feel my face. Yeah, because so, that, that was the, our first gang chant. It was like, just fucking hilarious. If we were going to have an iconic line, I'd say that's it. That was from the movie Blow. That's when uh, 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 Bobcat Goldfield does that line, and he's oh, just yeah. like... It is, isn't it? I can't yeah. feel my face. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, that had me rolling. Um, what was your favorite song? I'd probably have to say... Oh, man, I can't remember the name. Reside. Reside? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that one. That had a brutal ass breakdown. Yeah, and it had the beginning part that it was. I would say it was probably our most simplest song, but it was the most smoothest song we played. It had a great it, turn. It's it just yeah. It was just like from the beginning to end. It was just like a like cup of water. It was just. Was fluid. that the song that we had? You remember we had the one guy who tried to play guitar. He came. Alex. In? Yeah. Yeah. Is that the one we wrote no, with him? No, no, we already had reside. So we wrote a brand new, whole different new song with him. I can't even remember that motherfucker. I can't rem- yeah. I, I remember we played one show with him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The last field show we all played. It was the last played. field show yeah. that we ever played. on for a song a song that one song and then that was kind of it after that oh since we're talking about shows what was your favorite show um man so i would probably have to say we played at the token lounge yeah and that we met those guys that were all dressed up like the kiss dude, members dude they had like <laughs> and football yes. metal pads <laughs> on with spikes coming out of them and they had all white, black uh, painted faces, yep. and we were all walking around in t-shirts and basketball yep. shorts. <laughs> and I just looked at them, and I was like, "They got some great showmanship." Yep. And then he looked at us, and they were like, "Oh, they play that crab metal, that crab walking metal." And I'm like, "The fuck!" And then later that night, we were playing, and everybody was doing dick dips. And then I hit me. I was like, "Crab walking yeah. metal, <laughs> duh! <laughs> that's <dip>. hilarious." <laughs> they got me. I totally got I roasted. Do you realize that? <laughs> Yeah, that was a great show. I yeah. had a good time. That, I shit myself that st- on that show. <laughs> I did. I swear to you. I didn't realize it until like later that night. But sure enough, yeah. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It's the D-note, man. When you do that deep growl. Yeah. I hit that shit so well. My bowels evacuated, bro. 
<laughs> it was rough. Yeah, I'd probably have to say that was the funnest because them guys yeah. were just they they just. And I was hammered, and that's always a fun time. Yeah, when the show, in a show, the show went fine, and that's always nice. Like when, when the show just goes like perfect all the way through. The day was good. Got a little boozy up. Everybody you're playing with is fun. Everybody just nobody's being a dick, and you just play your show. You do your thing, and, and it's good. Like that. Yeah, you that's play the your way, time. Yeah, that's the way I want my day and show to go. Like it was just perfect every time, right? Oh, yep. uh, what about a worst show? What's your worst show? <laughs> I know the worst show I ever played. Yeah, it was the Shroom Show <laughs> on uh, uh, the Devil's Night Show. Yeah, the Nightmare Show. Is that when your strings broke too? Yeah, that's when my yeah. strings broke. That's when I tried to flip the guitar. And it just <laughs> bat flip, dude. Uh, worst, wor- yeah, worst, worst time probably. I, I mean, I just I had a great time, but the show itself was was a terrible. Yeah. It was tragedy. So that was pretty that rough. Was worst it was show, pretty rough. Hundred percent worst show. <laughs> so after you uh, were in my advice to you. My advice, you disbanded, and mm-hmm. then all of a sudden you picked up a new talent, which was DJ. And, like, that was, like, the thing at that time and period. Uh, you know, dubstep music really took a hold. That house music really took a hold at that time. Uh, what was it like transitioning to just being behind the uh, laptop mixing up songs? Well, Marcus was already started doing it, so it was kind of easier to just kind of, again, same way I kind of did with guitar. It's something I could kind of do, but, like, you just – I needed that proper guidance. That's all I really needed, just somebody to, like, help me get that little push in the door, like, this is how you do it, not, like – I just really need to know the basics. So Marcus already knew all the basics, so he showed me a bunch of stuff on Virtual DJ, and I kind of took it from there, but I never really advanced past Virtual DJ. Yeah, Mar- so, Marcus in the scene doesn't get enough credit. That yes. dude has helped out a lot of artists mm-hmm. and it definitely it, and deserves it. And, and, like, even, like, now he can use uh, CDJs. He can use turntables. He can use whatever you put in front of him. Now, like, I remember we used to have to take, like, we have to be like, hey, you got a thing for our little USB <laughs> deck that we can yeah. set up because we can't the use your shit. computerized yeah. digital boy. And we yeah. couldn't use their shit. So it's like, it's crazy. And I just never progressed, like, past that. But, I mean, I was I was good enough to kind of, you know, go with the pack. Whenever they would do a show, they would throw me on the show. Yeah, you so played that, you but, played a bunch yeah. of shows so, with, like, Call Us Black yeah. and Marcus. So it was kind of cool. I, I, I kind of got into the scene based on association. Yeah, right. Fuck yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you have a favorite show being as a DJ? Like, I'm sure there's plenty of house shows that have gotten crazy and wild. I've been yeah. there. Yeah. But do you got, a, like, a for sure show that, you uh, know, you got on the ones and twos and just fucking milked it? Uh, don't play the Robert De Niro. No, no. <laughs> there's a lot more bad ones in there. <laughs> like, well, tell me about a bad one. The What's good, the well, worst? The good ones are all the house shows. You right, know, that's right. the thing, though. Like, I didn't really play a whole lot of, like, venue shows as a DJ. I mainly did the house shows. That was my thing. So it's like... I, I, did I, you play any of the semi-bangers? Uh, You know, I want to say I didn't. Yeah. Nope. No semi-bangers. I was I not thought, DJ. I thought, at I thought the time. you were. Mm-mm. No, not DJ at the time. Mm-mm. No semi-bangers. Is this the time? So is that the, uh, like, semi-banger time? Is that's, when you transitioned. That's into, when I transitioned. That that's kind of when I realized that when I realized that Keyshawn and Marcus were just taken ahead. Yeah. I kind of just slowly like realized that that was just not, not my your thing. Avenue, yeah. yeah, and so then I found I was like, you know what, I'm gonna I want to be a part of the music scene still. So, speaking of the semi banger, though the first semi banger we had, it was thrown by Drew, TJ, and Marcus Norton Threat, mm-hmm. the other three quarters. And that day, I just pretty much, I walked up to Drew that night, and I was like, hey, bro, I was like, look, we've all been friends working in the music scene together. Like, yo, I want a part of this. I want to yeah. be a part of I want to be a part of Northern Threat. I want, I, like, I want in. And he was like, for sure, like, ask Marcus and TJ. And I went and asked both of them, and they were cool with it. And from that show forward, it was just. We Is that there. when you start picking up the mic and actually spitting? Uh, something tragic happens. You go cold turkey, cut it off like a bad habit. Still attract the pain like a magnet. Build that shit up till you like. Fuck it, I've had it. I've taken my happiness for granted, yeah. No, I mean, I, I guess that's, I, I, how to say this? That's what gave me more opportunities to pick to do up that. the mic. Okay. Yeah, I was always, I was, I was always writing raps before, but I never really had the opportunities to get on stage. And then when we started throwing our own shows, it was just like. From right that on. moment forward, yeah, you know, like again by association, it's all been it's all been nice by association things. Like I just I've been able to have the talent to get so far certain pl- certain places. It's just always been nice that I've had that. Association. Oh, bro, you're preaching to the choir, man. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of the great accomplishments that I have done in this scene is because I have great men behind me mm-hmm. that fucking support me. Exactly, like, my ones and twos, the wizard himself over here, mm-hmm. uh, the great wizard of Oz, if you will, behind the curtain. <laughs> 
<laughs> the shit wouldn't be what it is without him doing, you know, the great edits, finds great material mm-hmm. to put on there, relevant material to put yeah. on there, and then cuts it up perfectly. Yep. Like, I really pay all my respect to the people behind me. Mm-hmm. And like, uh, like you said, even my advice to you wouldn't be a thing if, like, didn't not seeing Helen Keller... Yep. Not being yep. introduced to everybody. That's what really kind of thrown us like everybody. Guys, let's just start a band. Why not? Yeah. They're doing it. Yeah. We saw Ipsy Metal and we wanted to be a part of that <laughs> exactly. in a big bad way. Exactly. Yep. And that's like what, you know, mm-hmm. I feel like made me. Oh, dude, I felt And then there was home. Fam. Oh, I know fam, Federation yep. of Artists yep. of Michigan. Yep. For sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. I remember doing that. Shout I think out that. Tony over there. Yeah. Shout I <laughs> feel like the Ipsy Metal banner is what uh, a fam was always going to be. Like, mm-hmm. it's just a place where artists can go. Coalition about and, and and help each other out yep. and put each other out there and not only that but like inspire other people like hey dude if you got a weird and quirky talent or a little passion that you wanted to try you have the right group around you to do it yep yep for sure we're not gonna judge yeah, absolutely not I accept everybody on this podcast yep. to tell me about their stuff you know I I usually venture out usually it's a lot of my friends because those are the people closest to me and the people I love like you I've I've known you for so long and I've seen you all this shit. <laughs> Uh, and and you've literally touched on everything, you know. Uh, when you first start spitting, who are you pulling from? What musical artists are you? Are you trying to emulate anybody? Are you like picking up different styles of flow? I mean, for sure. I mean, to I, mean I don't want to sound cliche, but Eminem for sure. Yeah. I mean, I guess I'm a hype Is guy. The white guy go to. Oh, I'm just I'm a such a <laughs> I'm just such a hype guy and like in your face type person, and that's just you know that's just what I how I get from him like as his persona like that just. Like, he'll just snap on a beat. All of a sudden, he'll have some, like, over here talking about this. And then all of a sudden, he's like, all right, now I'm just going to hit this beat like you never heard me rap before. I'm like, what's that energy? And I was like, I want to bring that energy like that, like, all the time. Like, you never know when I'm just going to go from, like, a nice flow to just, like, in your yeah. face hitting. So, and and I want to be able to rap like that. I want to be able to make other things rhyme with things you don't really know should rhyme with each other. And that, like, that ability to sit there and, like, just have that mindset of like, I can see things and hear things other ways, but like people don't understand that they can hear those same things the same ways until they hear them that way. Right. On. So it's, it's kind of like, th- that's really what drove me. It's not necessarily like him as a rapper, but just how he approached the game. Right. And and though how he approached rapping and writing as a whole, is kind of how I took it with him. That's what's up, man. Yeah, I like, mean, I feel like that's a very, I, I joke about it, but for sure. I feel like there's a lot of people that draw from that. Um, what about playing with Louis Cipher? Like you did a song okay. with Louis Cipher, right? We, we actually had our thing. We still, I mean, I guess you could still say we still have our thing. B fam, brothers yeah. from another mother. Yeah, <laughs> right yeah, on. We actually just did a song together. Um, the last show, like before everything shut down, we did it. There was a charity show out in Detroit, mm-hmm. and me and him wanted did of our uh, did one of our new songs that we wrote. Have you right. recorded them? Got them out there? Uh, well, I do actually. I have one of them recorded, which is, is uh, I don't fuck with you. Yeah. And uh, the the next one we have, we never actually got down to recording it, but, like, I pretty much just, I wrote it, I brought it to him, and I was like, yo, guys, like, I want to, like, you want to hop on this? That's usually how I approach with TJ. He never really brings stuff to me. I'll have a song ready to go, and I'm like, yo, dude, like, I need a verse on this. He's like, oh, bro, I got you. And then and he just will take it and do his thing with it. And that's how I Don't Fuck With You came to part two. I was like, yo, I want to record this verse and this hook. And I went in the studio, and he was like, bro, you got what are you doing for the second verse? I was like, I don't got nothing. He's like, Oh, that that's mine. That's mine. This <laughs> I'm gonna is, get that one. This is our song. I'm gonna take now. that one. Right, right. <laughs> this is our song. <laughs> I dig that. I dig that. Yeah, you gotta get that recorded, yeah, man. That, I wanna hear that and, shit. And and that's how it would usually work with us, man. Like I would always do the first leg work and then he would just always just be able to put his thing on it. Yeah. For sure. So um I mean to not not to completely jump off the music shit, but ever since I've known you, you've been a gamer. Like big time, mm-hmm. and I'm just curious, what, what what game did you like first grip on? Oh man, you know what I'm saying. Do you remember your first game that really pulled you in? Hundred percent. What's that? Grand Theft Auto Two. Grand Theft Auto Two for Grand real. Grand Theft Auto Two. My, my brother Mike, who was thir- rest in peace, uh, 13 years older than me. So when I was born, he already had all the the gaming systems and everything. I didn't really understand what those were. But then when 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 PlayStation came out. And, we got that, and then 
And then Grand Theft Auto 2 came out, and I remember I was not allowed to play it, but he, whenever he would babysit us, he would let us play that. I mean, just be able to run around right. and just... <laughs> As a little kid, bro, like the kill frenzies, you just how many like it's it was just it was just the best best time. I mean, you could just spend hours just driving around doing absolutely nothing. And as a kid, like that, that's the fun. That's that's what I miss about being a kid, man. Just being able to drive around in GTA and and, and just you know obviously you know murder people and, and, yeah. and well, rob that, banks. That, that tees up your the game that I'm about to bring up. I mean, the main game I see you playing on Twitch. I mean, your Twitch stream is like, I feel like that shit's a professional because I swear you get fucking kills faster than I've ever seen. Thank I you. suck at games. I, I am. I am. A, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a relaxed gamer, as yeah. you call it. Yeah. Right. See, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to smoke. I'm going to drink while like I'm story playing. Lines. I like storylines. I don't like storylines. God damn. Do I nope. like storylines? I like to just I could give a fuck like less about kill. multiplayer. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, the whole reason I don't play uh, Elder Scrolls online, there's too many assholes that run in your fucking screen frame. Yeah. <laughs> Story's about me. You feel me? Story's about me. I'm the orc in charge. <laughs> Get out of my frame. Who are oh you? There's no elves in this scene. Get the fuck out of here. But uh, for sure, <laughs> I see you on Call of Duty. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, sh- I'm a, I'm a shooter, man. You're a shooter I, up, I, I for like sure. To, I don't play no campaigns. I haven't played a campaign in uh, Call uh, Modern Warfare 2. That was the last campaign I, I played and actually enjoyed. And then, um, so you don't play the campaigns on your Call of Duties? Nope. Oh, dude, I love that. That's the only thing I do get I into. Drop in, I want to kill. That's it's it, like, I'm oh, about- I get a mission. I can sneak. I know there's not 20 health motherfuckers that exactly know where I am because there's a radar that tells them where I am. Fuck that, dude. No, nah, man. My it's, friend, my 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 computer mates, they stay in their fucking place. They don't run out and just start throwing grenades, doing their own thing. I need structure in my life, goddamn. See, I like chaos. There you go. Yeah, that, I that's can tell. the best way to put it. You like a structure, yeah, game. and you here, like chaos. go here, do this, then do this. Then Have do you that. ever noticed yeah. when we played? That's what I ask you. What should I do, John? Yeah. <laughs> tell me. Tell me where's the places I yeah. need to be. And that's the type of player, honestly, like playing with them more so, like. It's it's you're just gonna follow. You're gonna do my every move. You're just gonna shadow me, and that's cool with me. See, if, this you know, is why you need a camera when you do your Twitch stream because you look like a doobie brother, and like being a doobie brother playing fucking Call of Duty or like Almonds Brothers, whatever. You know what I'm talking about. You get what I'm saying. You're as much as you listen to '80s music and that shit. You look like a dude go, from the '70s going right on in, <laughs> and and the fact that you're sitting there smoking motherfuckers on Call of Duty. And, like, you know, 14-year-old kids are, like, the best. And you're making them cry. Like, that's what brings joy to my heart. Yeah. Because I'm getting destroyed. Oh, death comms, bro. Yeah, bro. Death, it's death insane. Comms. Give me life. You know how many times if, I turn off a... the microphone because I cannot handle kids shit talking now? <laughs> it's not like I can go all hard and tell them all kinds of dirty shit. Well, you can get banned now for that. Yeah. Yeah, I see you, that. You can, you can are they banning kids like if that? They, if, if you bully, if you get charged with possibly bullying, you, there's a new thing. You can go report for somebody for bullying. Are you been reporting people for bullying? No. No. I got bullied back. <laughs> You're both about I ain't to no get punk. Eye for an eye, jackass. <laughs> Leaves the whole world blind and your game's turned off. Um, so we, we got to get you a camera first off. All right. That's the one thing me and you got to work on. Send up your camera game. I just yeah yeah one bum yeah bum right one of the right boys you, man. You know, bum, bum a light bum I see a boy K right there all crazy <laughs> that might be mine. <laughs> I'll give you the hookup. Hey bet. Uh, so I, before we get to the last questions, I want to talk about it because we always used to, have, used to have fun doing this. Okay. Um, every time I used to go over to your house, even when we're playing video games or just you know smoking a joint in, in the back room, we always used to get into movies, mm-hmm. right? And we always used to like bring before IMDb was a thing. We used to be those guys. Yeah, to be all like, "Oh, Josh Brolin, what's his first fucking movie? Oh, it's Goonies." Goonies. And, yeah. and now this motherfucker's yeah. Cable and Thanos. Yep. He was he was a Goonie back in the day. Yep. Uh, what what movies have you seen lately that have just like are fucking fantastic? I watched honestly. You know what's crazy is so Quentin Tarantino. Yeah, my opinion, my favorite. Yes. Like I can I can watch when 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 Once Upon a Time in Hollywood came out, I watched that sucker. I, I shit you not, since we were going through quarantine, I, I had it on repeat. Dude. I would be playing video games and I would just have that movie on repeat. Uh, like You're just, exactly like, like me, dude. <laughs> I have that playing in the background and then I'm playing this. Not really even watching, but the listening to dialogue, get, every look. Every I can't look. get enough of it. As soon as the Bruce Lee scene it, comes out, I'm like, 
There's no way fucking no, Brad Pitt I, beat Bruce no Lee's way, ass. No way. No way. No way. Bruce Sorry, Lee Brad Pitt. Bruce Lee would have fucked him up, dude. <laughs> So, Mr. and Mrs. Smith, you think yeah. the dragon didn't beat Mr. and Mrs. Smith? Get fuck out of here. Got so, an asshole. So Tarantino, I just watched Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs. Oh, you did the whole. I did the whole spiel. I did go, you watch I, the documentary? I see. I, I just found out about the. Yeah, documentary. that one was good. The dude. first eight, I need to see that. That's how yeah. I learned. That's how I learned that this motherfucker almost kind of like he got a gig on a show that we all know as a Elvis impersonator on the okay. Golden Girl. Bro. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I'm telling you, he is in the background doing a, a hurry, hurry. Yeah, I swear to you. It's hilarious, dude. And he took that money and he made, you know, his first uh, mm-hmm. flicks, dude. Reservoir Dogs. Bro. And what a flick it was. Well, and what's, what's weird about Tarantino is a lot of people know is like the movies that he's written, like, are that he decided not to direct, like Natural Born Killers. Mm-hmm. Never knew he wrote that. Yeah, like I mean, dude, all these crazy uh, movies that just like he that he wrote. He or produced, his, it's, yeah, it's he's got wild. his finger on a his lot of and everything. There you a go. finger yeah. on a lot of fucking flicks, and anything that he kind of touches, kind of is a hit when hit. you think about it, dude. I mean, dude, the fact that he just like when we were watching Django, I fucking completely forgot that like Jonah Hill's in it. He's, yeah, he's got a scene yep. as a KKK member, and it's just like a brief thing, yep. and it's five minutes. fucking hilarious, yep. dude. Yep. And dude, that movie's fucking great. All his fucking movies. All his great. movies. They, they, they are hateful eight. Like it's that's it's, fucking a, a great flick. To, if, I'm a western. It, instead guy, of so. just calling like one movie a classic, I have he's a has a classic catalog. That is the, like I don't care what Jackie movie it is. Brown is one of the yep. best made movies <laughs> dude, in the fucking world. And it's hard to say like, and it's crazy because that's not even what like. For me, not even one of his top three best. No, no, nobody. Which is crazy. crazy. When you talk about Quentin, nobody brings up that movie. And but that movie was yeah. the shit. It's, dude, it's so wild. I, I love like Tarantino. Michael Keaton <laughs> in that fucking movie. First off, Michael Keaton yeah. has been in Erdang. Dude, like, yeah, and, and the dude like, is the shit. He has the shit. smallest role. Yeah, he's in it for like very, 15 total, very 20 small total role. minutes, and it's great. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, dude, that's the man. Mm-hmm. Michael Keaton's the man. Was Batman? My Come man, on. Max Cherry. <laughs> Yeah, Max. <laughs> oh, man. My dude, Max. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious as fuck. All day, man. Talk all day about this. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, usually we wrap this up with our question uh, at the end. It follows the sex, drugs, and rock and roll pattern. So you can either talk about the way you lost your virginity, how. Uh, you can talk about your worst drug experience, or you can talk about your most rock star moment. Okay. Uh, you know what, virginity. Virginity. We're going to go virginity <laughs> right off the top. Let's do it. Let's so hear it. I was 15, uh, had no confidence. And my buddies were like, my buddies, Matt and Kevin were like, yo, we're, we're getting you laid. Like there's a party tonight at Kevin's house. Like we're, you're getting laid. Like we don't even care. Well, we're locking you in the room with the girl. If we're And so they get this, this, you know, she's a little bit bigger girl. You know, but whatever. <laughs> she looked bigger. Hey, you know, don't, don't be hating. Don't be hating. We all been there. Nobody saying. We all been there. Nobody so, saying. So finally, you know, they 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 give me the SoCo. That's what they were feeding me all night was the SoCo. Southern, Southern Comfort? Comfort. Southern Comfort. Bro. And that was then, my first alcoholic th- beverage Then ever. I remember that I started getting like, and I was getting drunk, like really drunk for the first kind of time. And I was like, you know what? I don't know if I'm, this ain't, this ain't the right time to lose it. Like, I don't want to do this. And they're like, oh, you thought we were kidding. They straight took me downstairs, locked me in the room with her. And she was just like, you know, we, we could tell them we didn't do it. I was like, there, there's no way they're going to believe that. Like, you know, and she wanted to have sex with me. So it wasn't like forced because she wanted, I just kind of, I got cold feet. And they're like, no, nah, dude. You were nervous. Going in there. Yeah. Who they, isn't nervous they when they're having their first the fucking room, time? And when I tried to leave, they ended up putting a. I mean, uh, throwing somebody in a room. They put a couch in front of the door. It was a little fucking abrasive. In front of it. it was wild. Yeah. yeah. Sounds a little bit wild. Yeah. Right on. First time I like him, man. I know a good therapist. Well, everybody, <laughs> welcome. To, <laughs> thank you for watching In a Bruise. Uh, I hope you enjoyed yourself. <laughs> Uh, we're going to be doing this all the time. Uh, John, tell the people blast, what you want to tell them. You had a blast? I had a blast, man. This beer got me feeling loose, man. Yeah. Like, we just, CBS you know, like, by Founders. 11%. Fucking delicious. If anybody, hey, this is a believer. I actually did drink this, too. I did not pour it out. <laughs> this anybody is not who, a fake show. This is not a fake show. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Uh, subscribe, comment, like, share, all that jazz. Be nice now, you hear? Mm. That's good.